From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Well, hello and thanks for joining us this Monday morning on March 18th. Let's get the week started. I just want to hug your, you know, your kids closer and just uh, really be mindful of every single moment you have with each other. Moments of reflection and a community responding to tragedy. The latest on a deadly crash and an infant's fight to survive. So I took out my laptop on a plane and I typed out the first line. Zoe Zhang was having an absolute blast. And that's the image that I try to portray about myself. Flipping the script, an author writing the words on a page hoped for in the real world. There are basically nine uh, quintillion possible brackets. And play along with our team, it is bracket season, baby. Your Bay Area community station with the challenge that brings novice and expert together. It's a Monday, let's do this. Okay, and we are doing it. It is 7.01 in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan. I hope your Monday's off to a great start. Yes, it is, Monday. What a beautiful weekend we had on Saturday and Sunday with all that sun. There were some beach days. I'm Gianna Franco. It was wow. gorgeous. You guys went to the beach, right? Uh, my husband did with our little. I was busy down in San Jose. I spent a lot of time there lately, but yeah. it's all good. Uh, I was in San Jose because I actually flew into the Bay Area from Arizona where it was raining, so I missed all this beautiful weather. Here, you know, I think I brought the rain to Arizona, and then We're it glad rained, you took it. rained yeah. out an A spring training oh, game. Bummer. Mm. Womp womp. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a live look outside on this Monday morning, and hopefully we'll have some good weather that I can enjoy today, Jessica Birch. Will the beautiful weekend continue into this week? Absolutely. We just have to get rid of that blanket of clouds, which eventually is actually going to pull back along the coast right around the corner. So let's dive into that forecast this morning. All of our microclimates are looking a little different. For example, there's really not a cloud in the sky down in the Santa Clara Valley. It's clear. It's beautiful. Look at that sunrise as we wake up and head out the door. Now that stratus layer and of course all that fog that's still kind of sitting in the valleys the more north we go. It's still kind of causing some issues at the surface level. So take it slow if you encounter any patchy fog. But heading into the next couple hours, we'll see a lot of improvement. Let's head over to Coit Tower real fast, San Francisco, where current conditions are a little bit chillier than normal. But later into this afternoon, we'll hit the 60s once again. Now, this weekend, we have 70s in the forecast. So today is just a little bit cooler compared to the past couple days. We'll continue to see dry and mild conditions to kick off this week. And then rain returns later this week. So I guess we're blaming Nicole for that then? Once we head into this weekend, I'll show you what's actually happening, though. Right around the corner, heading into this afternoon, we're going to see that blanket of layers or that blanket of clouds pull back. What are the normal conditions are expected issued by the Climate Prediction Center as we head into the next six to ten days? And that actually does play out for our next rain system sitting just offshore. So today, tomorrow, lasting into Thursday's forecast, actually, we're still seeing dry conditions. But this system right here is going to impact us Friday, heading into Saturday. And I'm going to time that out for you and let you know how that's going to look for us coming up in just a bit. But at least it's a dry morning for us here in the Bay Area. G, how are the roads looking out there? You know, the roads are actually getting a little bit busier, Jess, as we get into the 7 o'clock hour. This is usually our busiest hour for the commute. Now, I'm going to start with the bright spot because it's just a gorgeous view of the Golden Gate Bridge and you're seeing some nice travel conditions. This is a little deceiving, though, because north of here, South 101, that's where it's really starting to get a little bit busy from Novato into San Rafael. So definitely getting crowded there. Bay Bridge, it's crowded. It's been like this for about an about over an hour now, that busy ride into San Francisco. We're now starting to see all approaches uh, with some brake lights, including 880, just a smidge as you work your way near that area at the MacArthur Maze. If you're taking South 880 into Hayward, that is certainly slow. All the way down almost into Fremont at this point. So connect, uh, connecting across the San Mateo Bridge might be a bit of a struggle right now as things get a little bit slow through there. We're going to check on the South Bay coming up in my next report because that is getting a little slow on northbound 101 as you work your way through San Jose. All right, a lot of students waking up wondering what happened in Pleasanton. Fire at a high school there. Crews did battle last night. Flames tore through part of Amador Valley High School. Let's take a live look right now that the sun is up. And it's been looking pretty sedate all morning long. And in fact, you see a student there with a backpack. We're understanding things are going to be okay there. But the fire did start just as the sun set Sunday in a gymnasium that is said to be about 100 years old. Now, we got this video last night as community members came to see what all the smoke and the sound of the sirens was about. Much different picture in the night. There is some damage, but despite the damage, there's an upside to all of this. Those hardworking firefighters prevented the fire from spreading to newer parts of the school. that serves nearly 3,000 students, according to U.S. News. And as we look at more video of the scene, despite the damage, school officials say the students who raced to the scene last night to see what was up, 
they will be back in school this morning because it was contained to just that one area in the gym. Looking live at San Francisco this morning and a follow on the death of a woman named Yong Feng Wu. Uh, she was found on the ground in the Bayview District bleeding. Uh, that happened last summer, but we do have an update. Fast forward these many months, and now we understand there's video that exists that is key to the case. San Francisco police and San Francisco's mayor say they want the video released. So also does a national civil rights group, the Asian Justice Movement. That group believes Wu's death could have been a homicide and a hate crime and successfully pressured police to reopen the case. Now here's what gives some power to their position. A reporter from the SF Standard uncovered the story of a woman pushing Wu. And by the way, police reportedly arrested that same woman last week accusing her of assaulting another elderly Chinese woman. So this is a story we'll be watching closely. Well, following a corruption conviction, the former chief of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission will learn his sentence today. A jury found Harlan Kelly accepted bribes in exchange for influencing public bidding process and steering contract awards, as well as bank fraud charges. That's according to the Northern District of California. He could face up to 15 years in prison. Street safety advocates will hold a vigil tonight at the site of a horrific crash in San Francisco. We already see the community putting up other vigils honoring the affected family. It comes after news that a third victim, a mother, died from Saturday's crash. Those close to the family say they were heading to the zoo at the time to celebrate the parents' wedding anniversary. It happened on Aloha Street at West Portal Muni bus stop. An SUV ran right into the family of four. The father and a toddler died at the scene. The rest were all rushed to the hospital. We spoke with the neighbors in the area when it happened who say they're very distraught about the entire situation. It was just very heartbreaking. It's very difficult for us to unsee what we saw. We just want to hug your, you know, your kids closer and just uh, really be mindful of every single moment you have with each other. The elderly driver was also taken to the hospital where we understand she is in stable condition, but because it's an ongoing investigation, it's unclear if she'll face any charges. That vigil that we just mentioned will happen around five tonight. All San Francisco police have said about the cause is that they don't think traffic engineering was a factor in the case. Well, traveling could get more comfortable in the near future. Senator Scott Weiner and Aisha Wahab are announcing a new bill today that would provide more funding to our transit systems. The goal is to improve regional integration by studying what parts of transit could get a boost and seamlessly integrating transit throughout the Bay Area. There's no details on where funding will come from just yet.